Some celebrities finish strictly come dancing and rave about their toned body or losing lots of weight. But Angela Scanlon insists it hasn't done quite enough for her just yet. Laughing she says, I mean, I don't know if I've got a dancer's bum yet. I have a flat Nana's bum. We had a trick in our Charleston that involved a handstand, and we did one run through and we decided to call it a day after because my arms literally just collapsed underneath me. But I feel quite strong and I realize I haven't done proper exercise in a committed way for a very long time. So actually it's quite nice to feel strong in my body and push myself. It's intense. The hours that you are putting in are insane. You do realize very quickly when you're actually dancing with someone who's a pro, and it looks so easy. And that's the gift, isn't it? They've worked for 20 years to make it look absolutely effortless. And then you do it and you look like a donkey in a barn. Viewers only see us on Saturday night, Carlos is like, oh yeah, it's definitely a process. And it is definitely a process. TV host Angela is less than two months into training. And whilst she may not have a rear to rival Kylie Minogue so far, the 39-year-old has found the BBC show liberating. Alongside pro partner Carlos Gu she is coming out of her shell and beginning to attack the dances with more confidence. I definitely think I'm probably kind of fierce in my own way and there's definitely a light and shade. I mean, we're multifaceted humans and I think sometimes you watch somebody on telly and you think, oh yeah, I'm upbeat or whatever. But there's definitely lots of sides to me and it's been really quite nice to be able to explore those. So it might feel surprising to people watching. But yeah, I don't know, I think all of those bits are a part of me. So to be able to express them has been actually really, really liberating, I suppose. I suppose I kind of am quite body confident, more in a defiant way. And I know people have talked about the fact that I'm not wearing fake tan. And I think it is that kind of sense of, I think it's important to lean into who you are and what you have. And as the mom of two girls, what I want is for them to be comfortable in their own skin, whatever that might look like. So if I don't show that or portray it, I can't ever expect them to really embody or feel that. So yeah, I guess I feel quite committed to doing my thing. Angela and 30-year-old Carlos performed the American Smooth on Saturday's show. They were awarded 28 points for their dance, with Shirley Ballas saying it was delightful to watch. But Craig Revel Horwood didn't agree and provided some harsh feedback saying, the clue to this dance is in the name American Smooth and Smooth it wasn't unfortunately. It just lacked grace. I have to say, I felt like you'd run out of ideas at the end. I don't think it's your best. Craig's comments, which caused a backlash from viewers who thought he was being too harsh, do illustrate Angela is still learning the ropes and they have found themselves joint eighth for two weeks in a row. She admits, it felt really personal, I was thinking, don't you mess with him. You can say what you want about my heels, but don't mention Carlos. It was supposed to feel dreamy and casual, it was part of the story. We were super nervous, two weeks on the trot at that position and it shakes you a bit. For me, what we're looking for is growth week on week. I thought we had taken a lot of what they had said the previous week and really worked hard at that and then to get no kind of acknowledgement, that was tough. But, 
perhaps taking advice from the actors on the series, she has vowed to fake it till you make it on Strictly this year and is trying to get into a persona when she takes to the floor so they can gain in confidence and climb the leaderboard. The TV presenter may have ditched the option of fake tan but she insists she is improving as she tries to fake she is a pro alongside the real expert Carlos. Looking back at previous dances, she says she can see what the judges mean when they told her she needs to relax more on the dance floor. So, via an ease waltz 100%, I struggled to relax. But I genuinely felt pretty relaxed on Saturday, which I think is why it was so crushing for me, I was like I don't know where else to go. I understand what they were saying to me, maybe about weight through my heels and breathing into the body, rather than focusing on my literal breath. Honestly, the tango was obviously a very different vibe to my usual everyday life and face. But actually that was quite nice to be able to, slightly hide behind, I guess. But when we were in the training room, it was horrendous because every time I had to do those skirt swishes and things, and it was being filmed I just was so embarrassed and so self-conscious about it. And then you realize that you have to park that a bit when you get on the dance floor because if they smell weakness it's game over. So I was like, okay, fake it till you make it. Which is kind of a law I live my life by. I mean, we've not named my alter ego yet, but look, there's so many actors here and I've watched over the past couple of weeks, where you're like, oh wow, what the face does is as important as what your feet do. So you can work really hard on your feet and if I go out looking like a deer in the headlights, it kind of kills the vibe. And we've worked really hard and Carlos is really brilliant on that kind of character and all of the expressions and stuff. I kind of try to slightly copy him a bit. I think mostly I realize that actually that performance side of things, even if it feels uncomfortable, once you get over the hump, actually is really important. For me, what we're looking for is growth week on week. I thought we had taken a lot of what they had said the previous week and really worked hard at that, and then to get no kind of acknowledgement, that was tough. It's incredible to have the public support, it's amazing, we've had some gorgeous support. I'm so grateful. Away from the dance floor, Angela is known for her work on BBC's The One Show and BBC Two's Your Home Made Perfect She shares two daughters with husband Roy Horgan and both Ruby, 5, and Marnie, 20 months have caught the strictly bug. Ruby even told her last week to try harder to avoid getting into the dreaded dance-off. She said, the girls are quite into dancing. So week on week I play our new track we're dancing to and they get in the zone. It's a nice bit of perspective actually to come home to. My husband's carrying a bit more of a load than he usually would, so yeah, we are tired but good. I'm loving life but it's quite consuming. This week Angela has seen one of her favorite fellow contestants quit in Amanda Abington. It's thought the BBC is keen for it not to be discussed by fellow celebs as a medical issue involved. But Angela has said she is gutted and sent her love to Amanda on social media. Back on the dance floor Angela is doing the Paso Doble to Black Swan Swan Lake by District 78. This has meant another tiring week learning a new skill. It's intense this week, it's a change of pace in a great way, and I think Carlos has put together a routine that is hard. I was surprised how much dancing there actually is on the show. And the shoes. I wear heels and I can operate in heels quite well. And for work, I wear them quite a bit. So I thought actually that would be fine. And yet, it's not great. Carlos is a brilliant teacher. He is very patient, 
but I think he reads me really well and is able to know when something's too much. Sometimes I just need a bit of time to actually not dance, in order to figure out how to dance. So yeah, I think we've got a good balance. And then when I want a little break, sometimes he'll just dance and I just enjoy seeing how it's actually supposed to be done. In the middle of the night I literally wake up and I'm doing the routine. Not actually in bed but it's kind of on a loop in my head. It never stops. Strictly come dancing on Saturdays and Sundays on BBC One. Both shows are available to stream on BBC iPlayer.